I'm Jada Willis, and this is the Back to Business Podcast, made for business owners, CEOs, and high achievers that are ready to leave their BS excuses behind, get more out of life, and see business growth like never before. Let's take the road less traveled and tackle the hard. Are you ready to get back to business? All right, and welcome back to the B2B. That's back to business. I cannot believe the guest that we have on today. I mean, I feel like somehow I've gotten famous and I've gotten to be able, like she's like the Oprah of the NFL, okay? I I cannot believe that I get to talk to the owner of Behind the Cage. I'm just gonna rattle off all of these things and I, I won't even do her justice. So the founder of the NFL Thread, Dot net editor the playbook i mean this and i i actually have received a copy of the magazine and it is i'm framing it as we speak author of when the clock runs out man please help me welcome cynthia cynthia can you just tell me about just who you are like I gave you just a little bit of like all the things checks the boxes of like what you do from a business perspective but share with the audience like Who are you really? Because I think you're the Oprah of the NFL. That's so funny. (laughs) You cracked me up. That's funny. I just feel like, you know, all the things that you mentioned, um, it makes me excited because every single one of those things are like a passion project of mine. And some of them took a really long time to come to fruition just because of life. So I felt like a lot of them stem from curiosity, like Mm. what... You know, my husband played for 12 years in the NFL and in his 12th season, well, really his 11th season, I started to question what life would be like outside of the game when we had to leave. Exactly. It seemed like everybody was just disappearing back then. Mm-hmm. So from those, that curiosity came when the clock runs out, which was interviewing 20 NFL players like Mike Dicka yeah. and, you know, it's like Hollywood Henderson, Rocky Blyer, uh, Ron Wolfley, it, it just like great players that um, shared what it was like when they were done. And that was a really important project for me. And I felt that not only helped me, but helped others, you know, understanding what we were in for as we navigate into transition. I love that. So I get a couple things from you is that through our conversations, and I'm thankful that we've just had some really candid conversations, you know, leading up to this recording, but it really feels as if you're, you really are helping those think about what happens post-life of the NFL, but also the women, women during, you know, while husbands are playing in the NFL and then also after, I mean, is is that really the, that was the spark for these ventures? Well, that, and for, for when the clock runs out, yes. But then after when the clock runs out, I thought, well, where is everybody and what is everybody doing and why are we not helping each other grow? Like, why are we not working together? Um, I'll never forget one of my really good friends, Bill Freilich, was at the Super Bowl and right behind him, like they were back to back, was Lance Smith. And he played with my husband. And so we were at a pre-Super Bowl party. And now Bill Freilich had an insurance company for trucking, the trucking industry, and Lance had his own trucking company. Wow. You know? And so I was like, do you guys know each other? <laughs> like, <laughs> do you guys know each other? And so I felt like really compelled back then to say, mm-hmm. what, what's everybody doing? How can we help each other grow? And, and to be really honest with you, mm-hmm. I wanted to dive into the playbook then, mm-hmm. but uh, my kids were really little. And I was telling this agent about it. I was like, I want to do a magazine where everybody knows what everybody's doing and how to get in touch with each other. And he said, "Um, why don't you go home and raise your kids? Oh, my goodness. (laughs) And I was like, I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you said that to me. Like, how could you say that to me? But then I started thinking about it. I was like yeah, that is a great idea. I'm going to put this on the back burner Mm -hmm. because I think this is going to consume me and I got I have three great kids and I want to really experience this. So I did put the playbook yeah. on the back burner. And when my kids went to college, I was like, come on, it's time. You know? I'm really impressed by that though, because well, first, you know, a lot of women would have actually just pushed through and said, absolutely not, and kind of done it from an ego perspective. But I respect the fact that you actually took a moment to realize what do I want right now? Where right. do I want to spend my time? 
But the well, coolest part about it is the fact that it's it was such a passion that years later you just you pick up you picked up yeah, right where you left exactly. off. Right. And I say that because I want everybody to realize that a lot of people feel that, well, you know, I'm like living this half frame of my life. I haven't lived up to my own potential. But, you know, so many amazing people get started later in their life. It just happens at the right time in your life. Mm. And you can't push those things. And I don't think that you could pursue that. And like, I didn't want the playbook to be something that would be a headache for me. It's like something I want to share other people's stories, connect other people, help other people grow. And so to do that, it does take a lot of time and it takes a lot of heart. And I had to give that to my kids because for me, because I didn't want to miss out on that. And I'm glad that I, I'm glad it worked out just like that. For Absolutely. Me personally. And, and think about all that you have been able to do. Well, first off, amazing kids, right? So they've been able to flourish in the way, but also what you're pouring into because you're just a natural connector. You, you sharing that story about doing the introduction means that that was, it's kind of like the breadcrumbs. I always say that to my clients, like, you know, whatever your belief system is or the universe, everything leaves success, leaves breadcrumbs. And that was just an indication of what you'd be doing at this point. So I, but I want to hear more about that. Right. I want to hear more about how you're continuing to, to connect um, the women, women of the NFL and, and what you're doing with that. Yeah, um, it, it was exciting because at the time when I was ready to jump back in, my son, Michael, had then gone to the Panthers um, as a free agent and he came home from, you know, his rookie, like, you know, one of the OTAs. And he's like had this his truck just had everything in it and I was cleaning out his truck and and I pulled something from underneath the seat and it was this amazing brochure called Q5 mm -hmm. and it was just everything he needed to know to succeed in the NFL wow. during the season and in the off season it was just this wonderful pamphlet and I was like Michael did you read this <laughs> he's like no, you know, no, I, I didn't get to it. I'm like, oh my goodness. And I'm thinking, you know, this information should go to the women because the women are going to share it with the guys. Exactly. <laughs> the women are going to tell the it's guys true. about the resources that are available. They're going to sign them up for the boot camps, mm -hmm. the postseason programs that are there to empower them. Wow. So I was like, I picked up the phone and I called, you know, our friend, my husband's teammate, Troy Vincent, mm -hmm. and he's just an he's just passionate about everything that he does. And I was like, Troy, I want to talk to you about something. You know, I have this idea. I feel like we need to reach the women. You know, I found Michael's Q5. I feel like it's, mm -hmm. and it's got to get into the women's hands. They'll share it, you know, because you guys are doing such amazing things now with NFL player engagement. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I can't believe you're saying this to me right now because we just started the women's resource initiative. Oh, and I'm like, He's like, I want you to be a part of it. So I started writing wow. um, art, writing articles for Women's Resource. I started to bring in women, and it was really fun. I did this um, feature called NFL Power Couples. So I was finding NFL wow. couples that were doing great things. I was featuring them. Yeah. I was going out and photograph, you know, photographing them. And it was just really a fun situation. And then um, it came to the point where Troy went from player engagement to ops. Mm -hmm. And with all that, the Women's Resource Initiative was kind of just going to be be in limbo for a little bit mm -hmm. and i and i said listen i'm gonna do this i'm gonna carry it out so wow. we know we need to reach the women and um i i think i can do this so that's mm -hmm. when i started thread and i was like let me wow. carry on what was what was started and the exciting thing about that is that so i started thread mm -hmm. that was in 2000 and 16 because mm -hmm. I was with them for three years doing the resource initiative and then started to build out thread inviting women to come on for free it's like the LinkedIn for NFL women yep. where LinkedIn are you for NFL women okay. yes where are you what are you doing That's what awesome. teams were that. you with oh I like what you're I like where you're at in your life I want to meet with you can we connect mm -hmm. can you help me promote my business um do you want to come to my event these kind of things um it, i look at thread is it doesn't do what everybody's doing because there's a lot of great nfl groups on um, nfl affiliated groups women groups mm. from um also the trust player engagement legends ops and the thing that's exciting about that is that um i'm also the president of off the field nfl wives association and that is like nice. troy was like you need need to meet these girls and i met erica lassiter through him and 
fell in love with everything they're doing. They're, we are a 5013C. We do things in the community. We raise oh, funds. I love that. Okay. And we impact communities. So Thread doesn't do what you do, but it promotes what you do. That's what I always like to say. I promote what everybody's doing. So then just this month, Troy sends me, cause calls me on the phone and he's like, Hey, we are bringing back the, the resource initiative, but we're calling it the women's community. Cause you know, Cindy, how passionate I was about this. You yeah. know what this means to me. And I'm like, Troy, this is fantastic. I know what it means to you. And, um, and in doing so, it was such an honor because he said, could you guys help us promote what we're doing and we'll help promote what you're doing, but can you help us grow? And I'm like, heck yeah, absolutely. So, you know, now off the field, Red, the women's community, professional football players, mothers association, oh we're all getting together. And we're, cause you know, we're like, there's a gazillion lanes on the highway. Mm -hmm. Everybody can have a lane as long as we're all getting somewhere great, you know, let's just go. Exactly. So we're, well, he was so passionate about that, so he brought it back. So it's kind of like this full circle thing. It it's is. Crazy. And, mm -hmm. and I know that probably some of the business owners or entrepreneurs are listening to this thinking, like, how can you do all of these things, right? And all of these things simultaneously. And my, my opinion on that is that everything, though, has the same mission, right? They all work together and overlap. Mm -hmm. Would yeah. you agree? I think so. Um, they're all telling stories. They're all mm -hmm. sharing stories. So if it's, I, I always say like, it's the five P's. That's what I like. So the platforms, it's, mm -hmm. it's sharing your story. Um, the playbook is sharing your story. The podcast, YNS Lab with NFL Thread, getting you on the podcast, share your story. Nice. And then my events, you know, they're in-person events, getting together, getting to know each other, understanding each other's stories. Wow. And, you know, so it's all, you're right. It all is it all is together and it's all the same mission, which is to grow and impact the community to empower, empower NFL families to be the best that they can be while they're in the game and while they're heading out of the game and then in life after the game. Oh, that's, and it's such an important mission. You would think like we just, we kind of take for granted because you have such a, uh, an easy style about you. You're so approachable. And like, I feel like I, you know, I've known you for years. I can just call you up and talk to you. Like it's, you just have that, you know, that style that, about you, um, the approachability factor. But I mean, if we look behind, okay, like behind the curtain. So I think that common folks don't think, well, what is there kind of to look forward to in, after the NFL? I mean, you've been in the NFL, like, right? Mm -hmm. No, like there's a whole life that, that happens you know, yeah. post. And so I think it's, could you give us more of an idea? Because I, I love that you're putting the human side to the, the people that we watch on the screen. Listen, I just watched the Steelers game this past weekend, 49ers game. I don't want to talk about the Steelers game, actually. But, <laughs> but I mean, when you, you know, you, you kind of idolize these players and not mm -hmm. thinking they're families. There's this day to day. And I, and I want you to shed some light on, on that. Yeah, I feel like, um, you know, in, it's really fun. My co-host for YNS Live uh, with NFL Thread, and we do Pivot, is Juliette Hahn. And she is, the reason she's affiliated is that she used to babysit my kids when we were with the Eagles. <laughs> and then she asked me to go on her podcast, and I was like, Juliette, can you, like, let's continue this on. Can you help me bring on the NFL women? Because I think people would really love to get to know NFL women and kind of like see the, the true side then and i'm going to say true side not the other side the true side of these women which really really are they're women who happen to be in the nfl that's all nfl women are they're just women who happen to be connected to the league and there's a lot of pressure in that there's sometimes masks that are put on um game day masks you know to protect yourself or to project an image that you think the people want you know we all went through that um but it's like then you start to realize that we're just girls and we're just here and yeah. we just want to have fun together and we want to like lean on each other you know a lot of the girls go to bible study together a lot of people a lot of them do events together and then when you're done is when you really are together because you're going through going through something because transition is difficult it's it's Let's talk weird. About that. It's, yeah. it's it's weird it's like your um husband who in in many cases the father of your children mm -hmm. has just had his passion ripped from him mm -hmm. he has brought his 
profession to the highest level, mm -hmm. but it's over. You know, it's over. You can't do it anymore. And you know? it's how old? How old at this point, typically? If you're lucky, you're in your 30s mm -hmm. because most guys are done in their 20s. Wow. You know, like my husband was 36. That was kind of crazy, you wow. know, and it was it was pretty long. He had a long career. Um, you know, it, it's luck, timing, talent, like how, but no matter how long it is, whether it's a minute, mm -hmm. you know, or whether it is like Tom Brady's decades, it's still difficult to understand that you're not, you're not, you're not, preparing for the game you're not in the locker mm. room you don't have that camaraderie anymore it's over and you are now on that other side that that former player side and um for a lot of guys it's an identity mm -hmm. crisis it's, it's an identity loss it's wow. like you know you you are no longer the person that you used to be mm -hmm. to yourself and to others you know and so they have to they have a hard time figuring out mm -hmm. how to what do you do with that and i know my husband I was so glad I wrote the book because mm -hmm. he was so angry and mm -hmm. all he did was play the piano. And um, mm -hmm. like, I remember he was, <laughs> I was working like really where I am right now, but I was facing the other way <laughs> and the piano was literally right there. Wow. So, so he was, um, all of his, his, his songs were like yesterday. Mm -hmm. All my troubles seem so far oh away. <laughs> and I was like, try to remember the days of September. And so finally I'm like, Hey, Hey, you got any eye of the tiger or anything? Because you're killing me in here. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and he just stopped and he just actually started to laugh and everything because he was just playing the piano, playing the piano, playing the piano, hoping a team would call, waiting for a team to call, working out, holding on to that dream, um, yeah. angry, not wanting to watch football, bitter about Jeez. it. Um, he told the kids, um, if, anybody's, if anybody congratulates me, congratulates you that I retired, you tell them my dad didn't retire. He was thrown out of the league. Oh, <laughs> please. What are so they were like, okay, daddy. <laughs> yes. I, were like, oh, I compare this to, you know, someone that has gotten laid off, but they're at a, a very high level. It's like the pinnacle, yeah, of your career. Oh, and yeah. it's a layoff. And you you didn't plan on, well, you don't, you feel like you don't have, I guess, more tools in your toolkit. Like what else do you do? Right. Yeah. And, but that's where you come in too. I mean, I want to hear more about the transition, but I think it's really neat that we had conversations about what does the preparation look like? Because there, we need to start thinking about, well, you know what, in five years, when 10 years, what, what else is there? Right. right. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. It's incredible what the NFL has now for players. Nice. These guys today, they are so on top of it. They are working on their businesses, their brands, their investments. Love. They are so schooled. They are so prepped. Um, there's very few that aren't thinking about like what they're going to do when they're done playing anymore. This was a different time. It really yeah. was. And um, even my husband would say, if I could do it over again, mm -hmm. I, you know, cause like the way he was, was I don't want to line up next to a guy who's thinking about what he wants to do after the game. Exactly. I want to line up with a guy who's just in the game and that's the only where he is. But now he changes it. And even with my boys, mm -hmm. he was like, your school, take it seriously. What are you going to do after you see how young I was when I was done? You know, like you want to be prepared. So it is a learning, it's a learning situation. And the NFL has boot camps. They have job shadowing. They have um, just so many opportunities for guys to get into, like to see what they want to do. What about the and, women though? So with that, then, what's the, yeah. what are the resources then for the, the wives? Um, well, that's interesting you say that um, because right now um, the women's community has started and they are really, there's so many opportunities for women and, you know, as women NFL executives, mm -hmm. um, you, there's coaching programs that they have now, you know, they've got, um, if you want to be um, a referee, you know, you can go, there's broadcasting. Oh, one of the girls has this amazing broadcasting boot camp. So there are things for, um, for women, but mostly, mostly the NFL women, you know, are leaning on each other and they're hearing what other, what each other are doing to say, Hey, I might want to get into real estate. I might want to sell this product. I might want to create my own brand. Um, the younger girls, they have brands. They are, they know exactly 
what to take advantage of where they are and who they are and they're branding themselves early on. It's, it's fantastic. Wow. And it is. It's genius. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a it is. It really smart, smart play. Um, mm-hmm. Going back to your success in the, the businesses and really the channels that you've created um, for, you know, uh, well, families of the NFL, I want to know, because again, there's that ease about you, the approachability, but what's been hard or has this whole thing just been super easy for you? <laughs> right. Easy, well, right. <laughs> like there are like, and, and I feel like that it's in any business, there are areas that are difficulty. Like, you know, for me, it's like, I, I, okay. If you want to talk about my nature, like my friends say that my company should be called, Oh no, just take it. You know, because <laughs> I love to do things and I love to do things for others. And I hate asking for anything. And that includes funding, you know? So mm-hmm. yes, the playbook is big and it's expensive mm-hmm. and my events are fun and they're expensive and, yeah. you know, just running the, um, podcast and running the platform. So the hardest thing for me is asking for the sponsorship wow. dollars. But what I try to do, mm-hmm. and I, it took me a while to realize this, is that give, 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 give. And if you oh give, God. then they'll realize the value of what they're getting and they will recognize that and then want to be a part of it. You know, they'll mm-hmm. want to be a part of what I'm doing. And that took me like a long time there to, you have to really explain Mm -hmm. why do you want to be involved with what I'm doing? What, what's in it for you? And what I, what I feel like I need to say is like, I'm going to give you an opportunity to Mm -hmm. showcase your brand and through me, and I'm going to do it. I will do it justice, Mm -hmm. you know, and I will get it in front of the right people to grow your brand. And, um, and then also looking at it, like, Hey, if you're going to put something in the playbook, don't put an ad in, put an invitation to collaborate because right. you don't want to just sell these guys. You want to collaborate. You want to start a new line. Wow. You want to start a new thing. So I had to realize like, what am I asking for? And what am I giving? You have to think about what you're giving. Yeah. But that doesn't mean it isn't still hard. Yeah. The return on investment. It's so, it's kind of funny that we're talking about this because I've been talking about it with um, a few clients this week is that my whole theory is, is, I never want a client to be paying the invoice and then ever feel like they're not getting, you know, more than, than even what they're paying. Right. So I'm going to give them a greater worth, right. They're going to get so much value that it's going to be a no brainer in the last payment. And I think we even touched upon that a few weeks ago when we were talking about it, but I mean, you're giving them more than just um, a spot in the magazine. You're giving them much more than that. It is. And it's like, and it is a multi-pronged approach for, for whatever they're doing, whatever the goal is and, or, or their business. But, mm-hmm. and that's really neat is that you're highlighting the return on investment in such a different way. Exactly. I feel like it's, to, to me, it's so important. It's like to just put you out there. Mm-hmm. No, don't come to the event, get to know my friends, talk to them, have ind- individual conversations with them. What happens from those conversations? That's your business, but you're there. And you can do something on your own. It has nothing to do with me because that's the whole point of this. It's like, hey, meet these people, get in front of them, tell them what you do. Maybe they'll be interested. Um, You know, if you're a real estate company and you want to like recruit who, what, what a great person to recruit is an NFL spouse or player who have, we've moved at least, you know, on the average of like 15 times, you know, to know the ins and outs of it and know what to look for. So I just feel like, yeah, introduction, not ad, you know, that's how I look at it. I like that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bold that. Every episode, there are a couple of things that you said. I didn't want to interrupt you, but I always have to do it with the guest and sometimes with myself. Awkward. I underline and bold in the air. <laughs> but, but like, it's just, yeah. I, want, I want the listeners to come back to it, right? Like, let's do an instant mm-hmm. replay on that. Right. Okay, right. Good deal. So just, I, you were going to add something else. So I don't want to cut you off, but I do, I want to hear more about the lessons learned, right? Mm-hmm. In your journey. Okay. You said okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm prepared. I'm feeling like the. Oh, okay. This is a good one. This is a my friend actually taught me this lesson, um, and I'm sure everybody goes through this. Um, this actually took a lot of weight off my shoulders, 
and it, it just changed everything. He, uh, we were taking a walk. I think my son had a bowl game, and we were taking a walk on Manhattan Beach. Hmm. And I had this anxiety in my life. I just felt like I wasn't anywhere near where I wanted everything to be. Mm. And mm, we all felt that. I was like, you know, in the end of the, where's my, what's my impact? Like, what am I doing? You know, what is my impact here? And he was like, what are you talking about? I said, you know, like, what is my impact? Am, am I doing anything? And, and he was like, you've already, look, what, think about your life. You've already made that impact. You've already done it. Like, look at your friendships, look at what you're doing, look at your kids, the impacts made, you know, anything that you do after that, it's just like, you should just be enjoying. And I was like, thanks, Cove. I go, that is like, awesome. Like, hey, you know what, if I look at it like that, like, what else do I want? You know, I've got a, a beautiful family, a great circle of friends that have seen, we've all been like, we've seen each other in every situation, you know, taking the dives, climbing back up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, um, I just felt like that was a really good advice. So that to me was like a lesson learned is that, mm-hmm. you know, just don't put yourself in a situation where you feel like you're failing because it's mm-hmm. the pace is slow, you know, just mm-hmm. be steady about it and be just kind of like a good hearted about it. And Absolutely. it's an impact, even if it's just one person, you know, even if it's just one person, one, if one person read the playbook and liked it, mm-hmm. that's an impact. That's an impact. That's such good advice. It really is yeah. right now, especially this I don't know if you know this, but a lot of the CEOs that I work with, this time of year is actually one of the toughest and toughest from a mindset perspective. I mean, this is the time of year you're trying to end, you know, some of the business, uh, wrap up some of the business for this year, get ready and strategic planning for the next year and a whole bunch of things. And you're in reflection mode. And so I think this was, that's really good feedback of taking a stock of your impact, but then also recognizing that, you know, it's really one person at a time, right? right. You want to make a massive difference, but you also don't know how that person is going to parlay that information, share it with their network, their family. And right. it's one person that starts the domino effect as well. That's right. I exactly. love it. And it's I, true. And I love they're breaking down probably some of the misconceptions of, about you. There would be an assumption of, of course, she's starting all this. And for the, the, the wives, the families of the NFL, well, she's you know in the NFL. Wouldn't it be easy? You just call them up. No, and it's it's not a you know I'm assuming there wasn't just a you know a list given to you of hey call all these people and they're gonna fund your <laughs> your playbook. It's not that. Oh simple, right. right, no, exactly. It's not. That's it's right. a total misconception because you think right. well you know you already have the names, you already have the people, you have the connections. That's not true. It was well. Somebody might do that. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> never thought of that. <laughs> You did this on your own. You really, I mean, like you, this is yeah. your idea, your creation, and you've, you've worked it in true, you know, entrepreneurial spirit way you've, you've done it and you're doing it. You know, right. I'm sure you, you have already planned some of the goals that you have and how this is expanding. And, and I love right. that all these opportunities are just, just coming to you. You know, recently you shared something um, totally up to you. If you want to share with our audience right before that we, <laughs> we started, but like, you feel in your zone of genius, like all that you're a magnet for good things right now. <laughs> yeah, good things. I do have a new grandson and I already just had a, a little, my granddaughter Reagan is a year and a half. Oh so God. like that is great. My son Alex just got married and he's expecting, they're expecting their first baby due in June. My son Michael just got engaged. Uh-huh. So there's all this little magic going around and it, and I know you weren't referring to that, yes. but on top of all that little magic going around was this cute little children's book that just kind of like happened accidentally. And, and it's just, it, but it is the cutest story in the whole wide world because it just happened. Um, so a bee in a matchbox is the name of it. And it was um, published by Pegasus Publishers and it just came out on the 30th of November. And this this um, Friday, my buddy has all these restaurants in Chicago. Mm-hmm. So I was already going to Chicago to celebrate Christmas with yeah. Dunn's. And so I called the publisher. I'm like, I'm going to be in, you know, Chicago. So we found this precious bookshop called Three Avenues Bookshop. And we're going to do the first book signing reading. Um, but the most important thing about this little thing that fell in my lap was 
A, it happened in front of me. Mm-hmm. My my son's dog, Chucky, was playing with this little bee and he heard it. And then we my son had to rescue it and put it in a little matchbox and saved it. We had to Google, how do you save a bee? Oh. <laughs> how do you rescue a bee? It's honey, water, and flowers, mm-hmm. little flower petal. And um, But the next morning, I just like, that was really cute. And I just wrote this little story. But the reason I love the story so much is it's about, the message is just really cool right now. And that is just kind of like, you know, and it's when you, when you, I was thinking about it with the NFL, it's funny because it's sometimes people think NFL women will sting and they don't, they're just nice girls, you know, really good girls. And sometimes things they'll think the players will bite. They're so big and they're just like walking away. Everybody puts their chest out like they want to go, but really it's an unlikely friendship that forged between the dog and the bee, both of them who were warned, don't go near bees, they'll sting you. And don't go near big dogs, they'll bite you. But they said, you know what? We're going to just be friends anyways. And the message is just kind of like, take it for what it is, forge an unlikely friendship, no matter what anybody has said to you about that particular person and make it happen. So it's um this little girl, Anna DeMolo, did all the illustrations. Wow. And I hope this takes her career off because this she is so talented. I mean, unbelievable. She brought everything to life. Do you know great. what I want every professional to learn from you? And it's your true humility and in the the awesomeness that you just show up and you just like, wow, with this, such a pure heart, this great idea, you took the initiative to write, you know, this overall story, submitted it, like that level of initiative. You kind of, I don't even know if you had any fear in that, but you're just like, hey, I'm going to do this. Such a good idea. What could happen? And then also when you're talking about this book, it's it's going to change lives. These kids, but I think that people, everybody of all ages need to read this. Um, but it's also the fact that your comment was, I hope this illustrator blows up. Like you, this is, I want you, I'm painting this picture because this is the epitome of leadership. This is the type of attitude that everyone needs to hold. And it's, it really is giver's gain. It's, it's giving more than, than what you're getting. And that's, that's the true yeah. secret probably that's to your success. Oh, well, I appreciate it. And, and that's funny. And, and that is success is success to me is being able to get these things done. It's, um, it's not necessarily, I'm not blowing up in terms of like, Oh, you know, this is great, but I'm getting things done. And that's the most important thing. And I'm feeling like, I, I hope that people are enjoying the opportunities that I'm putting in front of them. And, and I do hope that people enjoy this little book because I do think today that the message is important. I think a lot of times that we are afraid to meet people because we have an idea, mm. you know, based on maybe this tattoos or maybe that. Yeah. And then you're like, you know, no, just talk to them, you know, just talk to them. Okay. Play. <laughs> Play. <laughs> well, with that, um, we're rounding the corner and I really, I want you to offer one more piece of advice to anyone that's listening. So our listeners are usually CEOs, business owners, leaders, some kind, I think that they can get a lot out of this conversation. Definitely the book. I think that that should actually go on tour with my speaking engagements in 2024, because this is, <laughs> it's, it's a really good reminder. But what's one, one thing that you want everyone to walk away with from a, a learning perspective, anything that you want to share? Oh, uh, well, I think that, I think with everybody, no matter, no matter what, if it's a business or if it's just your family or if it's your friends, I think that if you have that motto of like, let's do this together, let's grow together, let's make this win-win, you know, then I think great things do happen. I think when you start to look at in another direction, that's when I think things do go south, you know? So I feel like, yeah, just even your employees, pushing them up, empowering them, making them feel like they you know, can do so many great things, that they're invaluable um, as a business owner. And also remembering why you even got into this. Why did you get into this? What was the passion? What was the purpose? And sticking to that and not forgetting it. Because I think sometimes we can forget um, and go down the road where then when that happens, like all the good kind of kind of gets lost. Before we say goodbye, though. Yes. Tell me, tell me everything about Grow Forward. I want to know about that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I was just about to remind our listeners that all the links are below because we have launched one of the best, and I'm going to say it, one of the best 
digital communities for ambitious, hardworking women. It's called the Grow Forward Community. I want you to visit the website, growforwardcommunity.com. And really, we're all about providing the support, but helping women like yourself just navigate those hurdles of life, the seasons of life. You're working, you're managing the work life, you're wearing all of these hats. And there's going to be like, (laughs) there's going to be another woman sitting next to you virtually and otherwise that says, you know what? I know I've been there or you know what? I'm about to go through that. Let's talk about it. And so what we do is actually have an online platform. We have different discussion groups, depending on if you're a business owner, a a mother, and various other things to help support you through that. But then we also have personal development, professional development. Um, Some of the really cool sessions that we have coming up is uh, in really investing 101, the financial hacks. We even have golf lessons, trivia oh nights. I mean, like I can give you this whole list. We have, oh, I have, I have a presenter actually flying in um, from Buffalo, New York, going to do an in-person session where the, the gist of our members are. And it's all about maximizing your LinkedIn profile for elevating your brand. When I tell you it's a totally customized experience because once you join, you fill out a survey and all of our, all of our um, like workshops and, and other in-person events, online events are all about what our members ask for. Oh my goodness. So like, who is it open to and like, how do you join? Like, Cause that's cool. That sounds really great. I'd love to share this. Open to all, all hardworking women, all ambitious, hardworking women. When I tell you there's four categories that I think that are going to get the best best out of this. And that's going to be entrepreneurs, working moms, busy professionals, and people leaders. Those are the folks that, you know, our programming is built for. And all you do is go to growforwardcommunity.com. We're also on the socials. So Instagram, Facebook, tell all the perks, benefits, you get a free t-shirt immediately, all kinds of swag. I'm going to check it out. That's so cool. I love that. Thank you so much. I know so many people I'll share that with for sure. That's oh, great. please do. Please do. Yeah, it, it's a it's a new community, but um, I'm going to tell you the, the origin story a bit. Yeah, I've been working in HR for 20 plus years, and so I've witnessed women in the workplace. But um, I a few years ago, I went through a divorce, and I actually put together a group. It was just a group chat of four of my friends that didn't know each other. I called them my crisis crew told them what was going on. And now like these women, I've watched this flourish, their friendships, their connection, helping through, you know, raising kids and and what's going on there. And, you know, my daughter just turned 16 and this is what's happening to Mm -hmm. us going on retreats like once a quarter. And just when I tell you that my crisis crew, I couldn't have made it through. And so I, I want this for other women. I want a confidential circle crisis crew, just a level of support personally and professionally. Absolutely. That is beautiful. I'll tell you, that sounds, I'm definitely going to share that. I can, when you, you said that I was like thinking one group of people. Oh, really? When you were just talking about um, just the development, I was thinking of all the young girls that I know, all my daughter's friends, they're all in that middle of that. How do you grow? Where do you go next? How do you ask for that raise? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Um, Even from our retreat, a recent retreat, someone walked away. One of the participants walked away and negotiated a $20,000 pay increase. Um, like it's, it's wild. So thank you for so much, but thank you for what you shared today for our audience, for myself. And I just, I just want you to know that you are an inspiration. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate being on and I, and I love just talking about it, hoping that more people know about thread, you know, more people just, you know, just get involved so that it's not just the NFL either, you know, kind of like you hear that and you're like, you know, even what you're doing is so similar. You hear that and you think, well, how can, how can I create like a crisis crew? How can I create a group of women and empower them? You know, what can I do with the people at work? So to me, it's just like, yeah, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to share that. Well, here's the really good news too. All the links are below. So everything that we're sharing with the the rest of the world, it's going to be a link to the NFL thread, um, the playbook. And because listen, I, I couldn't believe whenever my magazine showed up and I was like, holy bones. So <laughs> really I'm going to get framed. <laughs> and you were loving Franco Harris. Yes, exactly. You know, I, when I see that cover and I just, cause I just love him and I love Dana Harris so much. And she's the reason that that interview even happened because Dana, yeah, Dana connected me to Franco and that's why I was so blessed 
to have a conversation with him. And he was, you know how you were saying that you do yeah. like, the double, so that would have been me the whole time. Like everything he said, I was like, <laughs> and every time he said my name, I was like growing up in Pittsburgh in the seventies. Exactly. Was, You're like, oh my God. <laughs> He's such a beautiful person, and so is Dana. Such a beautiful person, and she's so supportive. And um, and I'm glad you have that coffee. You know, okay. absolutely. And thank you so much. You are a complete inspiration, and I hope that our journey uh, doesn't stop here. No, no, exactly. Me too. Thank you.